from time to time in 3D, you're going to come across projects where animating with the F curve and keyframes like this cube here in my scene. Although it looks smooth and it looks great, sometimes that's not the result you're going to need. Sometimes you're going to need something which ha has a lot more pliability to it, something that you can manipulate on the fly and uh, warp and change. And that's just how it goes. Maybe you want two cubes in it. And we can do this using the plane effector and linear fields. And why might this be useful? Well, look at a couple of my projects I did last year. So we've got Nugs and we've got Zort. And these two projects specifically were the animations that were at hand were not going to play well with F curves. In fact, both of them utilized linear fields, delay fields and effectors and animating individual objects, in this case, one or two objects with the linear field upon a plane can give you a much more a magnetized look to your desired parameter, your desired parameter being the floor in this case. Well, we need a sense of coherency. We need the objects to look like they belong on the floor. So instead of pulling that and yanking that down on the Y axis, we essentially keep it in our field that's hovering it above the floor. And then we remove that field and it goes back to where it belongs. So I hope that elaborates it in a bit more of a simple sense, but we're going to explore that today. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to see what kind of uses we can have for it. And these projects in particular, I think are great examples. And if you want to see them uh, properly, you can look at them on my website. And if you watch my last tutorial, that was in fact a much more complicated measurement of using uh, the plane effector. So if you manage to follow that effectively, you're going to find this a lot more simple. I'm going to try and keep it quite quick. Uh, I, I don't think this is something completely unheard of, but knowing when to use it and seeing direct examples that may not be obvious of it being used, I think is going to be extremely useful and valuable. So what we'll do is we'll jump back into a new scene. The sponsor of this tutorial is Skillshare. And if you want to expand your learning further, reaching outside the limitations of YouTube is the way to do that. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. And it's for people exactly like you and me who want to achieve mastery in their craft over a very respectable amount of time. And we also want to explore counter crafts to push different angles of our prime creative journey further. So with Skillshare, you can learn what you want to learn for yourself and your purpose. Whether you're just starting out or you're a creative professional, Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and your skill level. I've been diving into some of these super cool sci-fi loop classes from Don Mupasi. I highly suggest checking them out as we all love a good Instagram loop, especially the sci-fi ones. And there's no fabrication here. Skillshare has no ads. And with a $10 a month annual subscription, the reinvestment is so massive to your growth as an artist. And the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity farther. And with that being said, good luck on learning. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So I think the best exercise to kind of flex the muscle of uh, using this kind of plane effector because it can be a little bit tricky and we are still using F curves. We're just using it with the linear field instead of in the object itself. So it's nothing too uh, strange uh, or alien if you uh, haven't done this before and you think it's going to be some newfound way of animating. Absolutely not. It's uh, a backdoor to animating uh, in, in a more simplified and malleable way than you usually do. So what we'll do is drop in that plane and we'll just use the cube again. I'm going to bring him up. Uh, so we're sitting on the surface there. And uh, if you've got my uh, free Z, uh, Z camera script, then drop that in and put us dead in front of the, uh, the cube here. And I am going to try and recreate this slam and have the cube bang down to where we are here. Now, if we drop the plane effector in, we set that to object, nothing is going to happen. No matter what, the deformer, uh, deformation mode has to be an object here, but nothing's going to happen. So I can just control Z back 
And uh, if we do Alt G and um, put the cube in the null there, you can do the same by grabbing a null and just dragging it in. Um, and then we again hold Alt and drop the plane in set the object. Now it's going to ping up 100 centimeters. So it doesn't actually, the cube does not have to be in the plane like this. The plane can be in the cube. They just have to be in the null together and uh, things are going to work. So now we have our cube kind of listening like this. So we don't have to animate this. All we have to do is kind of tell, I'm going to pop at the camera for a second. Uh, we just have to tell this Y parameter how far up we want it. So let's say, let's do, I think 800 might be a, a pretty, not too ambitious, but a decent amount. And then we come through our fall off and add a, a linear field. Well, it's right there, I should just click it. Uh, and then we come into our linear field and we change this to minus Y. Yeah, minus Y. Um, so no matter wh what way we animate this, whether it's that, you're, you know, whether whether it's you know you're you're going x across the the, um, the right or the left or we're going backwards and forwards what's making the cube slam down is this is a field and as soon as this field leaves the boundaries of the cube it's going to return to its parameters outside of the ones we've given it through the plane so no matter what way you do this, uh, it's not going to change. But I guess for kind of a bit of a uh, Cinema 4D brain connection to your animation, it's probably better to have the field animate in a slight coherency to your object. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to increase the size of the field a little bit. And I am going to make this maybe seven seconds. And up to about three and a half, I'm going to have this kind of come down slowly. And then between 3.5 and 5, that's when I'm going to have it slam. And this is going to look really horrible right now, but hopefully we should get a little bit of lift from it. If this does what I want it to. And then um, slowly slams down. Okay, cool. So this could be enough for you. You could be skilled enough in cinema where you just have to see this and then, well, off you go. Now, if you're using multiple objects, I do think I used a random, I, I do think I used a, a random effector on the Nug scene. And I think that was due, I can't quite remember, uh, but the two boxes, the two tubs were rotated in, in opposite directions, which makes me think it was random field because if I, uh, random effector, sorry, because if I did it here, they would all rotate in the exact same way. Um, but we can add a little bit of rotation here like that. And then of course, as this slowly comes down, um, it's going to undo that rotation slightly. Um, now we can increase our inner offset here and that always gives you a little bit of more, uh, smoothness to everything that's going on, or it can completely take it away. Don't be fooled by this guy. Uh, he can be quite annoying. Um, but I'm just going to try and get him to the, the linear field to start on the edge of where he's affecting him. So you can see he starts to affect him here. So I'm just going to stop him just above the point he's not affecting him anymore. And then it should make it a little bit easier to give us a little bit of a, a slow push into the animation like that and then drops down. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to hit our linear field window and F curve. Now, of course, we only have one controller for the entire smoothness of this animation. And this is the Y. If you're doing this with keyframes, you're, you, you know, you, you might have to go into the rotation P, you might have to go into the banking, you might have to go into every single little thing. And I don't know if you have this problem, but man, lining up curves to get them to work together is the most annoying thing ever. So this is a really good solution to that. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to give him a slow little bit of push. Uh, now you don't want this to go up. 
because then he's going to reverse. As soon as it goes up, he's going to start going backwards. So we're going to maybe give it a little bit of smoothness as he lands. We'll see. Um, I'm going to maybe bring him down. And uh, I'm going to bring him down more. Because I want that to be pretty instant in his movement. That's not too bad. And then he's going to slam. And that's cool. Now what I want to do next is show you how we can kind of give it a more spring-loaded look. And the delay effector is a great effector for animating like that. So if you maybe shove your cube into this tree here, and then bring your delay effector into the knot, and shove your plane in there, and uh, we'll set the, the delay to object, and then set the effector mode to spring, and you bring up the strength, we'll come into the camera here. And if you watch the cube slam down, watch what happens. That's pretty cool, right? Very cartoony. Looks awesome. Now you can kind of see, I had like a little jiggle on the tubs when they landed, and that's exactly how that was done, was with that. And there can be some issues with it, kind of smashing through the geometry, but as you uh, set the strength to a uh, nice amount, you should get around that. Now what I want to do is bring the camera with us here. So, we can see that we land at about 4.3 seconds in. So I'm going to have the camera come down about, yeah, maybe, maybe half a second before. And then we're going to bring our camera up. And you can see he's just not going to listen. He's going to go on his way. Cool. Now, what we're going to do, come to our F curve. Now, in the position Y, I'm going to hold control and I'm going to add another keyframe here. And we're just going to make him be a bit slower, but quicker than the cube in when he slams down. So, like that. And then we're going to give him more of a slam so we can do that by rotating this up like that, giving it much less fall off. And then he just slowly slams down. But what we can do is give it a tiny little bit right at the end so it doesn't look too static. And then another thing you can do Let's come back to your starting frame, hit control on the Z, and kind of give a bit of a pull in across the whole animation. Let me come back to the start, come back a little bit, come to your window, F curve, um, do control A, and hit this little symbol here. And now you can have a nice zoom in the whole time. Now, of course, this animation is had nowhere near as much refinement as my original one. Of course, uh, I think this was probably maybe six or seven hours um, going back and forth. Of course, I'm building other assets in the scene as I'm doing that. But um, you can see it's the exact same effect there. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit snappier, much more refined. But the general effect is nothing overly complicated. And uh, you can see an offset isn't too big, but if we come to the F curve, so I did have a random field, um, and that's how I is that how I did it. So I used a random with the you know, the random field wasn't turned on. Um, either way, I uh, to get this offset one going kind of and to the left and one to the right, it was within random. Um, but if you look here, it's a very similar F curve to what we've just seen. A slight little bit of curve in the end, so it's not too um, horrible. Um, camera, kind of same thing again. So of course, this is a recreation of that Nug scene. But I think understanding that, oh, I now have a completely different approach to animating if I if I want to, you know, being able to detect I've got this idea or this... Um, this project that's coming up and I need to take a different route in. I may need to change things. Of course, this is a non-destructive way and you can come in and keep changing the geometry 
is non-destructive and that works extremely well, um, especially in Cinema 4D and 3D. Uh, and although it may take a little bit longer to set up in theory, or you may think it's more confusing, understanding that this is a tool you can turn to, I think is very valuable. It's nothing insanely unique, but it's there and it is a, I think, a very unified approach to um, giving your brain a sense of, I, I, I think it simplifies it a lot more in your brain as to what's going on and how it's, how it's going. And, uh, and I really hope you get some use out of it. I didn't want this to be too long of a tutorial. I just thought after last week's tutorial using the plane, I say, oh, hey, I know I've used this before animating individual objects. I tried to find a tutorial that was similar to this and I couldn't find them. There's plenty of tutorials utilizing the plane um, in triggering uh, clones and um, all sorts of uh, animations like that. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's usually what you correlate using a plane effector uh, to. But anyhow, um, I'm going to wrap up this tutorial here. Uh, please check out my store, go check out my assets. And uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you really get some use out of this. It's a nifty little trick. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.